Well, here we are back at the world-famous Silverstone Circuit for the championship finale. And with the weather just about perfect, it should make for a great day out for the crowd. So we are finally getting to the end. Let's see. Here I think I'm going to make the suspension pretty hard. And the longer gear ratio as usual. And I'll leave it down for so long this time. This is the setup, so let's go for our last sprint race. It has been quite a ride on the Expert Difficulty Championship. Hope you guys have enjoyed. All the drivers are on the grid and the lights are about to come on. Let's see who gets away in the lead. And so we start the last race of the, the last sprint of the championship and the penultimate race of the whole championship. It's with a lot of nostalgia that I'm getting back to the championship and doing the last Experts Championship round. Back in 98-99 this was one of the best racing games you can get as a kid. If you were serious about the uh, racing and about some form of realism, oops, I did a bit of a mess up there. I had the inside line and I had a little cut, but still. This is the ring cars. <laughs> so. I remember me and my friends, we used to have some debates and discussions between Toka 2 Touring Cars and Gran Turismo 2, the two big rivals. This for me was a bit more about uh, quality over quantity back then. And in Gran Turismo you could do lots of stuff and have lots of fun, but it was more about quantity. Of course, it was a great uh, game in its own right and led the, the licenses and lots of other great things. But the driving experience was far from uh, being uh, anything realistic or trying to go for realistic. It seemed like it at the time if you were not used to games that try to replicate simulation. Some other details that for me made this very interesting was the AI behavior. Here you have a dynamic weather and also the AI have some sort of a dynamic behavior where they defend and attack and their lines change a bit depending on where you are on the track. These Nissan guys, they are also championship contenders, so I think that if we lost at least two or three races where we didn't get any points, I think the Nissan guys could win the championship, and usually they are pretty quick and they go for some aggressive moves on us as well. They tend to be the most aggressive. <laughs> I'm trying to be careful, I don't want to wreck my teammate. So I'm following Rydell now. The Volvos were also some really nice cars. I remember watching as a kid in, I think I used to watch the Eurosport channel but and some racing channels or some sports channels that had racing programs. I remember the British Touring Car Championship was amazing because you had lots of different cars winning the races. I think that in the first four races of the championship you always had different cars winning. Always like completely different cars, completely different teams. 
and here I've got to be a bit careful now we are in first position I want to keep it so for me this was a great experience as a kid I remember trying to drive here with the keyboard it used to be really hard and then I had like a Sidewinder Thrustmaster joystick or something even cheaper from some other brand and you could usually steer you could calibrate the joystick to steer with the joystick and then you had like the speed pad thing like a, a switch on the side that had lots of analog sort of positions and so you could uh, try to use that for throttle and brakes and that was the best thing I had for a while final lap. Repeat. This is the final lap. it took me almost 30 years to get a, a steering wheel or something like that and here I think this is maggots and backets I'm thinking about the layout of this track this was the national layout I believe because uh, it looks like it's half of the track from the Grand Prix version, the Grand Prix layout and the main straight that we have on this layout of the track is now the back straight of the Grand Prix version the international layout but it's a great track, you can have lots of different car classes racing here it has lots of different layouts in real life and I'm used to drive this track in a more realistic sims where the track is laser scanned of course here they did their best and for a game from 98 it was actually really good here's the final positions so the newcomer emerges victorious again beating off the opposition to the checkered flag So we won the sprint race, this particular round is not as hard as the previous ones, especially Knock Hill and uh, Ulton Park, we had lots of bad weather and stormy and rain. Let's go for the feature race this time. So as we move on to the next round, the sunshine remains, making conditions for the feature race very much the same as they were for the sprint race. And they're lined up on the grid again, this time for today's feature race, so let's join them for the start. Not my quickest start, but it's an endurance race, sort of, so we don't need to be worrying too much. It's funny that we have these yellow stripes on the side of the cars. This is to identify which cars went to the mandatory pit stops and which cars did not go to the mandatory pit stops. I think this was added in 98 to the championship as well as a smaller crew with only two guys changing the tires so that the pit stop strategy will be involved in the races we also have uh, i think only one lap qualifying so that was a pretty serious <laughs> championship regarding some of these rules like Imagine in a real life championship, instead of having 15 minutes, one hour, half an hour to qualify, you only had one lap. You do the hour lap and you just go for that one attempt at qualifying and whatever happens, happens. That must have been really stressful. So, our team engineer is already telling us, not the engineer, but the, the spotter or the radio. Usually I call him crew chief. <laughs> Our chief is already telling us that the pit boxes are open, but... Oh, what are you doing right now? 
he doesn't want to let me go, so I'm stuck behind him for a while. He was defending pretty hard, but we managed to get through. That's almost like a hairpin type corner. I think he's on the inside. Yeah, he got the move on me. But now I have the inside just right before the main straight. And I open up the turn, so we end up having the advantage here. Before really big straights, it's very important to have a very nice exit out of the, the turn the, before that straight. I have to worry about these guys from Nissan, they really want to, to win the championship. As you saw there, Reed was hitting my car. So, we are stuck in third position for a while. As it used to happen in the real life championship, the AI here drives a bit, a bit crazy regarding contact between the cars. There was one lap of a race, I think it was here in uh, Silverstone, where uh, two guys, I think it was uh, Alain Manu from the Renault team and uh, I think it was David Leslie from the Nissa and uh, if you check the footage from the championship those guys they had uh, three points of contact in the first lap they, their, their cars touched it three times and one of them went off track I almost went off track here as well I got some inspiration <laughs> But those guys were a bit crazy. I think uh, the track was wet in that race or something like that. It had been raining before. Or so you had lots of cars together fighting for positions. And sometimes the cars understeer, oversteer, slide a little bit. And when you get a bit of an unpredictable behavior, sometimes you hit someone on the side. But at the third time they were hitting each other, it looked like they were both turning the, the steering wheel into each other. The guys were really fighting with the cars. That's something that you will only see like in some cars classes like the touring cars. Maybe a little bit of bumper contact in Nash car as well. But it's not as fun as in these tracks, for me at least. In Assetto Corsa Competizione and Assetto Corsa I'm more used to international layout of this track. I don't think I've done this layout, the national layout, many times. Well, that was quick. Now we are just kind of like hot lapping the track. We almost lost it there, a little bit too much speed and uh, I felt the car steering a lot more than what I was steering. So this was a new concept back then in 98 to have like a, a racing game where the driving simulation at least... Ah, I forgot to go to the pits, I got to go. Now this explains why I am having a bit of uh, grip loss on the front tire, especially. I've been having nice splits the whole time and making fastest laps and just pushing the car.
and then I forgot that I had to pit. Well, we have a nice... I think the guys from my team are angry that I have not pitted. I've never gotten so many radio messages in such a short amount of time. So we end up having to go to the pits. I'm going just to change the front tires this time so we don't lose too much time to the guys in the back here in the pits. I've not been reading uh, in the lower part of the screen the split time. It's probably... Um, the, the split times are probably... Um, I have the camera on top of them. So I think they are covered by the cameras. The guys used to, to say this, break in the pit stops, <laughs> when I used to watch these races. One of the things that got me interested in touring cars was that the cars seemed like pretty normal cars that you could see every day. I remember when I was a kid and I was like... Um, watching the Japanese Touring Car Championship and I saw Lamborghinis and Ferraris racing against Nissan Skyline and Toyota Supra and Honda NSG and in this championship you also have a, a Nissan car, of course, different model, but still and the Honda car as well and so you get that feeling that it's not only the Ferraris that go fast. If you give the car to a proper team that knows what to do with it. And the car is already a nice base to start, to start working on. This is strange, so... Oh, these guys didn't pit. This is why I lost the positions. So... These guys were skipping the pit stop like me as well but their, their teams also got angry with them that they got to pit unless they want to be disqualified <laughs> when I was inside the pit stops I was a bit stuttering when looking at the bottom of the screen because I couldn't understand why the guy behind me was so close to me now I understand he didn't go to the pits back then I think that the rear tires are the ones that are a bit more messed up now. It's funny that you don't have any sort of app or anything like um, any information about the tires on the screen, so you actually have to have some experience driving in this game to feel if the tires are getting worn out or not. And if you spin a lot or have lots of times where the tires are leaving skid marks on the track and you are screeching a lot the tires then you start to feel even more so it's pretty interesting that your driving style will actually affect the tires And as always I've been driving the whole championship, I believe, or most of the championship with the steering wheel range at 600 degrees. This is what feels most comfortable to me. And also I have the centering spring force at 80%. And the sensitivity is always in the middle. I never touch that don't want to change the curve and the behavior final lap. Repeat. This is the final lap. so 111 first uh, sharp uh, 
the first right it's in a very flat out sixth gear if you don't do a very sharp line here we only break until fourth gear and we almost can go for straight lines between these chicanes <laughs> they're pretty easy here I break around the 100 meter you can do it in fourth gear in lower rotations or in a very high rotations third gear it also depends a bit on the line and the setup here it's just flat out here I break a bit closer to the 15 meter bar to fourth here I also break on the 50 usually to fourth not third then here it's not entirely flat out I'll just open up a little bit here and it's the last rain and the, the last race and the last win of the championship. I'm going to miss this championship. Here's a rundown of the final placings. So the newcomer emerges victorious again, beating off the opposition to the chequered flag. So we won the last race of the championship, as expected. So that's it, the final race of the championship is over. Let's see the final points table. Renault's new driver certainly has made a name for himself by securing the 1998 British Touring Car Championship at his first attempt. Let's see how the teams have fared in the Constructors Championship. Thank you guys a lot for watching, I hope you guys enjoyed uh, the Expert Difficulty Championship here in Toka 2 Touring Cars. Please leave your comments, likes and subscribe the channel for more content like this. Thank you very much and have a great day.